Now, your primetime local news leader, Fox 22 News at 10. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, the mother of a two-year-old who was exposed to fentanyl and suffered an overdose has been indicted by the Penobscot County Grand Jury. 29-year-old Jessica Shepard was arrested back in May of 2022 for allegedly leaving fentanyl out in her home. According to court records, that led to her two-year-old daughter consuming it and experiencing an overdose. She is also accused of giving the child Narcan to revive her. Shepard was indicted today on charges of aggravated assault and endangering the welfare of a child. Meanwhile, Bar Harbor and Mount Desert Island police say they are looking for a suspect from New Hampshire that was spotted in Bar Harbor before taking off. In a joint release from both departments, police say they received a call from Wolfboro, New Hampshire police around 1 o'clock this afternoon, reporting that a male subject operating a stolen vehicle was traveling in the direction of Bar Harbor on State Highway 3. Wolfboro police called again shortly after, saying that the man called them saying that he was at the, a local hotel in the lobby. The suspect was identified as 40-year-old Jeremy Gee of Wolfboro. Police say they were able to locate Gee in the stolen vehicle, but as they arrived on scene, he fled the area on foot and into the woods. Gee is a white male, approximately six, six feet tall and weighing around 200 pounds. He has hazel eyes and brown hair and was last seen wearing jeans, a ball cap, sneakers, and no shirt. Gee was last seen in the area of Crooked Road and Old Norway Drive. A warrant has been issued for his arrest, and police say if you see a man matching his description, do not approach and call 911 immediately. Well, switching gears now, the Legislature's Appropriations and Financial Affairs Committee approved a budget early this morning that includes investments in child care, housing, emergency medical services, and paid family and medical leave. The vote was 11 to 1. It represents part two of the biennial budget, and it will go to the full legislature for approval. The exact date will be announced by the presiding officers before the end of the week. Small business owners are dealing with the pressure of rising electricity rates, even if their usage rates remain the same. Our Doug Banks has more. In January of 21, his electricity bill was $1,000. In January of 22, the electricity bill was $2,264. As in March of 2023, his electricity bill in Ellsworth was $4,533. The man Representative Thorne is speaking of is his nephew, Christopher Thorne, who owns the Dairy Queen in Ellsworth, along with four other locations. Over the past few years, and this year specifically, Thorne has seen his electricity bill skyrocket. When you open that bill up at the uh, beginning of February to see that you spent a lot in electricity at, uh, in January, um, and not just this location, but four others, it's, it's an eye awakening in that, okay, how am I going to pay for this? He says numerous expenses have gone up over the past few years, including wages, delivery, and food costs. Unfortunately, those increases have been passed on to the consumer. Just because a, a business raises their menu prices doesn't mean they're making any more. They're just covering up for the cost that they're being charged, whether it's uh, McDonald's or uh, across the way or Dunkin' Donuts up the hill. Um, we're all dealing uh, and combating it the best we can. According to Thorne, the increase on his bill is coming from the cost per kilowatt hour rising, which measures how much energy someone uses per hour and the standard cost section of the electric bill. According to Central Maine Power, this cost goes towards the state's solar policy incentives and power purchase agreements. Regardless of the reasoning behind utility rate increases, people like Christopher are asking, when will it stop? I've been told many different things, and we don't know when it's going to end, when the increases are going to end. In Ellsworth, Doug Banks, ABC7, Fox 22 News. Well, there are more rate hikes coming in the near future for homeowners as well. In early June, regulators approved a rate hike for central Maine power that will increase a typical home's total electric bill by just over 1%. Versant Power will be hiking distribution rates effective July 1st and then again in January of 2024. That according to releases on those companies' respective websites. 
And in other news, the I-395 extension that spans from Route 1A in Brewer to Route 9 in Eddington is starting to take shape. Our David Ledford took a tour today with members of Maine DOT to get some answers to some of the questions we're all asking as they work to finish the project. This is where the Eastern Ave Bridge is going to be. The Wilson Street Bridge that carries Route 1A is behind me. Right now, everything's going well and we're on schedule. The main Department of Transportation's I-395 and Route 9 connector project has been under construction since early 2022, after years of planning. During this time, crews have been laying the groundwork for paving, which is expected to start this fall, and setting up bridges for local traffic. Department officials say this project will provide what they're calling the missing link between communities, connecting the Eddington region to the Bangor Brewer area. Right now, if you're going from 395 to Route 9, six miles down the road, uh, there's a lot of turns, there's a lot of different speed limits, there's a lot of encountering local traffic. This will make it a smooth shot, um, especially for commercial vehicles. For those who have been using the detour, redirecting Cluleyville Road traffic in Eddington, an end is in sight. Officials say the road will reopen on November 15th, as will some other bridges involved in the project. This is one of five bridges that is involved in this project. It's the only one that has a road going under it. Um, right now, there's a lot of bridge work going on on the six mile connector route, um, some earthwork, but um, we're putting the bridges in and hopefully opening some of them by the end of this year, by November. Officials say the end goal of this project is to help connect communities and invigorate the local and state economies. Economically speaking, businesses that do business in the greater Bangor region and serve markets east of here all the way to and including Canada, um, they will see the benefits of having uh, a more reliable, safe, faster road. The approximately $106 million project is on track to be completed by mid-2025. In Brewer, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The Senate has passed a bill to construct suicide prevention barriers on the Penobscot Narrows Bridge. LD1120 seeks to prevent further loss of life by requiring the Department of Transportation to build and maintain pedestrian barrier fences. A statement says studies have shown barriers are more effective at reducing suicide than alternative methods such as signs with telephone hotline information. Prior to the installation of a barrier, the Memorial Bridge in Augusta was the site of numerous deaths by suicide. Since the barrier was put in place, no suicides have been reported at that location. The bill now goes to the governor. She has 10 days to sign it, veto it, or allow it to become law without her signature. Well, experts from all over Maine came to Bangor today for the 28th Annual Child Welfare Education Conference. The focus? Finding ways to benefit the lives of children. Our Matthew Jaroncic has the story. Case managers, behavioral health professionals, and lawyers were among the many who participated in this year's conference. It's been an awesome opportunity to connect with other professionals in the community. It's been such a great learning experience getting to um, talk with and listen to the presenters who have so much um, education and experience behind them. Participants sat in on breakout sessions focusing on the conference's theme of trauma and resilience in a post-pandemic world, highlighting areas including supporting the LGBTQIA community, homelessness, and mental health. When you're dealing with families with children that come into the child welfare system, we have to deal with a lot of social issues. As workers that care deeply about the well-being of children, we try to learn about those topics and to build skills together. Office of Child and Family Services Director Dr. Todd Landry stopped in to give an update on the work OCFS has done and recognize the crowd's hard work. Annie E. Casey Foundation ranked Maine 12th in the nation based on these key data indicators around child and family well-being. Just a few years ago in 2018, Maine was ranked 16th in the country. Maine Child Welfare Education Executive Counselor Bonnie Dawson says it's the passion participants bring year after year that make these events meaningful. One person, one person, listening, seeing, acknowledging um, what someone has been through and that they're valued, and that they have a place in this world can make all the difference in the long-term outcome um, for a child as well as an adult. In Bangor, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The UMaine Graduate School is celebrating its 100th birthday tomorrow. Here's a look at what Maine's only public grad school has done over the last century. 
The University of Maine's graduate program was formally organized on June 29, 1923. But postgraduate degrees were awarded to students decades beforehand. The first master's degree was granted to agriculture student Walter Ballantine in 1881. And the first master's degree conferred to a woman in Maine was just a year later when Persia Vinyl White received a master's in literature. There have only been 12 deans of the graduate school in the last century, including the current dean, Dr. Cody Var Vararamian. We have a, a variety of programs at the master's level, 85 master's programs and 35 doctoral programs. The dean says UMaine's status as a high research doctoral university was granted in part due to the tireless work of graduate students. In the next century, UMaine hopes to see an even bigger expansion of its degree programs. Well, when it comes to asylum seekers, Portland leaders have long called on other communities to pitch in. Some are wondering how to bring asylum seekers up north, even all the way up to Aroostook County. Mal Meyer has more. I have been like them and I know what they face. Victoire Linguanga is using her experience as an asylum seeker to help others find a new home. I'm checking with the asylum families, the refugees who are here in the southern Maine, what they need, their needs are. She's based in Portland and now working as the Workforce Development Coordinator for New Mainers at Northern Maine Community College in Presque Isle. Liwanga's job is to be the bridge to connecting people with the resources available up there. This program, it's a very good program. It's going to help them to, I can say, to restart their life here in the U.S. The community college's president says they received two grants to fund this position for two years. The goal is to build a workforce of the future. We think it's really important that, that it's a partnership with the community college and the city to make, make this happen. And that partnership, I think, is going to make this successful. It continues the efforts started by the Northern Maine Growth Initiative. That's a collaboration between community partners and employers focused on how to bring new Mainers to the area. What are the workforce needs in Presque Isle and how could asylum seekers help with that? I think New Mainers in general um, will help us with our workforce challenges. We have gaps in services that are not being filled in the healthcare sector, uh, the service sector, the retail sectors. Portland City Manager welcomes the idea. Across the state, anyone who has housing available and is able to step up in that way, yes, I would encourage everyone to do that. That is one of many issues that Lewanga will assess up north so the area can be prepared to welcome this new population. And that was Mal Meyer reporting. Right. Well, as we turn our attention to the outdoors, kind of more of the same of what we've been experiencing today. Yeah, I think we're kind of stuck in a pattern here. It doesn't <laughs> it look like, like it. it's letting up anytime soon. Yeah. Bear with us, folks. Here's a first look at your forecast. All right, Beth, thank you. Happy Wednesday. Your first weather is brought to you by Webb's RV. Check out the spring and summer specials on RVs and campers. Don't forget, we have the sharpest pencil in town, and we have kind of cool temperatures, right? Rain and cloud cooled air across our region today, average high being mid-70s. Nobody did that today because of this. Lots of rain showers out there, clouds as well. This will likely continue tonight and throughout the day tomorrow before it has reinforcements coming in. We have scattered showers in the forecast in to the holiday weekend. We're going to kind of keep it going. Lots of breaks in there, but just get the idea. Cloud cover and a couple showers around, not just tonight, through tomorrow, through Friday, through Saturday, and most likely into Sunday as well. Our forecast ends tonight, though, is cloudy skies, a couple of showers out there, low temperatures near 60. Your full forecast is coming up. Beth? All right, so a soggy overnight coming our way. Yep. People need to take maybe a little extra care in the morning. Yeah, good good idea there. And mm. still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, Bangor's Dakin Pool receives a generous donation to help with a number of planned upgrades. And residents of Howland share their reaction after the town was criticized by a travel website. Those stories and more local news when we come right back. Get inspired and revive any room in your home with trending pieces that fit your life. And now get up to 60 months no interest. Experience the style at Jordan's. The Chevy RS family of SUVs has it all. Whether you want the 10.2 inch diagonal color touchscreen on the Chevy Blazer, or extra peace of mind with Chevy Safety Assist standard on the 2023 Chevy family of SUVs. So take your pick 
The choice is yours. Spring into adventure and get 1.9% financing on select popular Chevy SUVs when you finance with GM Financial. Visit your main Chevy dealer. Come stop by Triple S Tax Shop, 315 Hamden Road, Carmel, for quality clothing and equestrian gear. Dine on the deck with a delicious view at the Lucerne Inn and Ryan's Pub. Experience outdoor dining at its finest, open Tuesday through Sunday, with award-winning dishes from their executive chef, Arturo Montes. Dining on the deck at Ryan's Pub is an unforgettable culinary experience you'll want to share with your family and friends. We are pet friendly, so your furry friends are always welcome to join you at your table. Your next visit to the Lucerne Inn will feel like the first all over again. Issue an alert. Our missing person just became the prime suspect. Don't miss alert. Thursdays on Fox. Whatever your style, we make it easy to create the home that fits you and that fits your life. And now get up to 60 months no interest. Experience the style at Jordan's. Hello everyone, I'm Craig Colson. Construction is far from completed on the Interstate 395 extension, but crews have made a lot of progress. Coming up on the next Good Morning Maine, we'll take a tour of the project with Maine's DOT to show you what to expect. We hope you'll join us then. unusual story for you. Employees at the Falmouth Goodwill found a grenade in their donation bin on Wednesday. Police determined the grenade was not active, but it did cause quite the scare. Goodwill employees say they do have a protocol for this type of donation. They immediately evacuated the store and called the Falmouth Police Department. Officers brought in their bomb squad, which determined it was an inert grenade, which is often used as a military training tool and does not contain any explosives. The police did take it to uh, to an off-site location and said that it would be safely destroyed. Goodwill's communication manager says the store was only evacuated for around 15 minutes, but asked customers to be cautious about what they're donating, and they want to remind customers that Goodwill does not accept any weapons, chemicals, or aerosols. And definitely a very important reminder there. Well, the Dakin Pool in Bangor received a generous grant from two beloved Mainers to be put towards an essential facelift. Kelly Warren has the details. Bangor's Dakin Pool sees up to 100 kids a day in the summer months, but it hasn't seen much of a change in amenities. The Friends of Dakin Pool is a community organization that works closely with Bangor Parks and Rec to preserve the pool. The group recently received a $25,000 grant from the Stephen and Tabitha King Foundation to support their fundraising campaign. Kim Livingstone is the group's secretary, and she says the generous donation will bring some much-needed updates. We'll hope to refurbish the pool house. Um, you know, it needs some paint, it needs some redoing on the inside to bring it back up to date. Uh, a new pool slide for the kids, that one in there I think is maybe original. Dakin Pool has an extensive history as the first public pool in Bangor, and it will celebrate its 67th anniversary on June 30th. The organization hopes to raise $160,000 for capital improvements and to help support their lifeguard staff. Well, I've been lifeguarding for about 10 years now. Um, lifeguarding is, it is definitely a hard, challenging job. You have to be very aware and pay attention. It means a lot to be part of the community and be able to help and be an impact on these kids. It's not only just sitting in a chair and watching the kids. You're talking to them. You're engaging with parents. You're helping them become a greater part of the community. The community impact is what means the most to Dakin's lifeguards. The friends of Dakin Pool hope that these fundraising efforts will make a big splash. To learn more about how you can help support the pool, visit Friends of Dakin Pool on Facebook. In Bangor, Callie Warren, ABC7 and Fox 22 News.
A great story and some great form there. Well, meanwhile, after the town received the rating of ugliest town in Maine, a Howland resident has put together a GoFundMe page in an effort to bring some new improvements that will highlight the small town's charm. Our Grace Blanchard has more. It's a small town and uh, limited resources and the town, you know, struggles just to maintain what we have. A website called Travel A Lot has described Howland as the ugliest town in Maine. One local is pushing back against what they say is an unfair ranking. Starting a fundraiser on GoFundMe uh, for the town of Howland to try to raise money to be able to buy some things for our public spaces uh, like gazebos, picnic tables, um, washroom facilities, uh, things like that. He is striving for an impressive amount of three million dollars to bring life back to this community. I know that that's really high for you know a project like this compared to people who have medical needs or things like that or their house burnt down but it's not a lot of money for an entire town. That that article upset a lot of the locals in town. Uh, the person that wrote the article didn't go very far from 95 uh, because if he had branched out in any direction from 95, any, any distance at all, uh, Howland's a, a beautiful little community. Howland's town manager does say there are a number of structures that are in disrepair. Within the last two years, I've passed a, uh, uh, an ordinance uh, on property maintenance uh, to try to uh, slow down uh, the, the, some of these deteriorating properties. So uh, we're trying to get a hold of it right now. And Though Lucci has a long way to go to reach his goal, he is feeling hopeful. I, I think that there's a lot of potential here. Uh, we've got all the rivers, uh, and it, it's beautiful. You know, it, it, it really is. In Howland, Grace Blanchard, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, restaurants get bad reviews all the time, but one in Brewer got a review that was so odd, its staff decided to make a T-shirt out of it, and now everyone wants one. Devin Dagnall met with the owner of the story, or owner of the restaurant, rather, to get the full story. The Yoshi Restaurant has been serving customers in Brewer and beyond for years, and just looking online, you can see they've gotten their fair share of reviews, most of which have been positive. But recently, one review stood out to the staff. The review itself just seemed really egregious. In the review, a deaf customer states they and their family were overlooked in favor of hearing customers, which current owner Josh Dyer refutes and says would never happen in his restaurant. He says any less than stellar service they experienced was due to staffing shortages. It was only 25 minutes that they could have been inside the restaurant. But the part that stood out most to Dyer and his crew was the comment, also, the sushi chef was Caucasian. Definitely red flag for us. I feel like nobody's race or gender or sexual orientation or any of that determines their ability to do anything. Dyer has been a sushi chef for almost a decade under the tutelage of Yoshi's founder and previous owner, Ting Luke, before taking over the restaurant last year, so there's no question of his experience or qualification. If those people would have came in in the last eight years, he probably made their sushi. The comment quickly became a running joke for the staff, with the joke escalating to the point where waitress Samantha Casella made a t-shirt for Dyer and posted a picture of him wearing it to social media the very next day. The pic quickly gained traction online, with many people asking where they could get one. I had to go run some errands that day, and some of the people had already seen it, and they know, you know, that I made it, and they were already asking me how to get one. Now, the restaurant is offering the shirts for order. Dyer says although he doesn't appreciate the one-star review, there's no hard feelings. I would honestly love him to come back and, and serve him dinner and have him actually rate my food based off my ability to make sushi and see what happens from there. In Brewer, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Wow. And I don't think any restaurant is ever going to get 100% five-star reviews all the time. All the time, yeah. People are very picky. But in this case, you know, it's it's sad that those were the reasons why, why right. people 
uh, felt the need to leave a one star review. But it's great to see them, you know, taking that gracefully. And, and yeah, they're definitely c coming at it from a sort of a unique angle, a unique approach, yeah. somewhat somewhat good natured for sure. Right. Yeah. So I'm sure. Well, sure. Uh, I'm sure they'll they'll bounce back. Yes, I, I think so. Yeah. All right. Well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, the Supreme Court is scheduled to release its next opinions tomorrow, with several high-profile cases left to be decided. And the CDC is reporting locally spread cases of malaria for the first time in two decades. Those stories and more when the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 continues. Get up and go, no matter what day it is. We make sure nothing keeps us from doing what needs to be done because we're driven by what we love. Milwaukee's outdoor power equipment handles any job, big or small, from trimmers, blowers, and mowers to pole and chainsaws. Milwaukee's battery-operated high-output tools will help get you to the moments that matter most. Get what you need to keep you firing on all cylinders when you sign up for Napa Rewards. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a main family that cares. of us are here to talk about trading. Right now at US Cellular, you can get a new phone without having to trade in your old one. Trade you my PB&J for that phone. No kid, you don't have to trade. See, $1,100 off any phone at US Cellular. No trade-in needed. You drive a hard bargain. Boom, chocolate milk. You don't have to trade. I'll take the chocolate milk. Okay. Boom. Get $1,100 off any phone. No trade-in needed. US Cellular, built for us. What's it going to take to stop this U.S. team? We can steal their place. It's quite simple, really. You train for four years in an AR simulation that mimics their every move. Yeah. Initializing crystal done. What's it going to take to stop this U.S. team? They're faster. Slower. Mixed style. Good luck with that. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. As early as tomorrow, we could see the Supreme Court hand down several highly anticipated opinions. Fox's Mike Emanuel is in Washington with the latest on what's at stake and how the next several days could play out. All eyes are on the nation's highest court as opinions on several key Supreme Court cases could be released as soon as Thursday. We know that the stakes couldn't be higher. Key rulings include the Biden administration's student debt relief program. I've had uh, more comfort in terms of uh, my bottom line, um, for sure. Also pending a decision on same-sex wedding websites after justices heard arguments on whether a wedding website creator may legally refuse to make websites for same-sex couples based on First Amendment grounds. Court watchers are also waiting to see if the justices rule on a case involving employee religious accommodations where a former U.S. postal worker was denied a religious accommodation to observe the Sabbath. We're confident that the law will move in the right direction at the end of the day. Plus, there's a pending ruling on affirmative action that could change how colleges nationwide handle admissions. The fact is that admissions in colleges is uneven. Uh, Blacks are underrepresented, uh, and that's across the country. However, the courts rule and their final decisions are expected to make history. Because when the Supreme Court speaks, the reality is America does listen because it's a major institution. It's one of the three branches of government. So far, the high court hasn't indicated whether it will break from its norm of finishing decisions by the end of June. 
in Washington. Mike Emanuel, Fox News. Meanwhile, the Kremlin says all is well in Russia after an attempted mutiny. But most observers say Vladimir Putin still faces plenty of challenges in the coming months. Fox's Greg Palcott has more from Kyiv. I definitely think this was the greatest threat to Vladimir Putin. The mutiny is over, but the fallout is still being assessed in Russia after what some are calling an attempted coup by the Wagner mercenary group. It exposed major vulnerabilities within the government of Vladimir Putin, posing what some say is a significant risk to his rule, including an apparent erosion of popular support for perhaps the first time after 24 years leading the country. The Russians did not come out in their hundreds of thousands to protect President Putin against this coup attempt. Even more troubling, the possible loss of Wagner's military muscle in Ukraine and around the world, which Putin can't afford, because Wagner has been at the forefront of Russia's attempts to expand its global footprint. If they just let Wagner go now uh, without a fight, if they let Prigozhin continue to control it, they take a huge hit in terms of their geopolitical influence. Putin. In a series of appearances since the uprising, Putin is sounding more in a fighting mood, reframing the mutiny as a victory. But some nationalist media outlets are criticizing what they see as a weak response from the Kremlin, possibly setting the stage for more dissent. The message, I think, is, you know, I'm in charge. Uh, thank you, Russian people. And watch out, traitors. Um, but a, a lot of things are very strange. Overnight, a Russian missile strike in a crowded restaurant in eastern Ukraine killed at least 11 people a sign that Moscow is still fully committed to this war. In Kyiv, Greg Palka, Fox News. Well, it's been more than two dec or it's been two decades since we've dealt with a malaria outbreak in the U.S., but new cases are now popping up in Texas and in Florida. Fox's Steve Harrigan has more on the CDC's response. Malaria used to be pretty rampant in the United States. The CDC was founded with the goal of eradicating malaria in the U.S., and now the agency is issuing a new warning, saying at least five cases of the mosquito-borne disease have been reported, marking the first time in 20 years we're seeing locally transmitted cases of malaria. Experts say it's being fueled by a combination of swampy weather and post-COVID travel. We're seeing more travelers post-COVID. We're also at that kind of moment in the season where mosquitoes are out in force and you have the local conditions in a place like Florida that enable this. All five cases are either in Florida or Texas, and the CDC is working on containing the outbreak. Local officials are also taking steps, including draining water where mosquitoes might breed and spraying larvicide. And folks who live in the area say they are being more cautious than usual. I've had to be more careful using mosquito repellent, which I never used to do. Yeah, it makes me take mosquito protection a little more seriously. The good news, this malaria strain is not as fatal as others overseas, and it's not expected to result in big numbers of deaths here. But some experts say we'll be seeing more of these outbreaks as the world becomes more interconnected. Within the century, 90% of the global population could be at risk of mosquito-borne diseases like dengue and malaria. So in a way, we're seeing a preview of coming attractions. The CDC says all five patients have received treatment and are improving. In Atlanta, Steve Harrigan, Fox News. And still to come on Fox 22 News, attend smoke from wildfires in Canada is once again prompting air quality alerts around the U.S. And we're just more than 50 days away from the first game at Maine's brand new field hockey stadium. We'll be right back. It's the return of Roman Reigns, plus two huge championship matches. And all new Friday Night Smackdown, live at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Moosehead Medicine, Greenville's favorite dispensary. Our knowledgeable staff will guide you on your journey to find the perfect remedy specifically for you. From pain relief to relaxation, Moosehead Medicine has what you need to improve your well-being. Stop by Moosehead Medicine today and discover the power of nature's healing. 
OHI is a fantastic place to work and has allowed me the growth I need to excel in my career, all while having fun with the people I support and my colleagues. OHI works around my school schedule and allows me to get the hours I want while maintaining my grades. Also, I can help out my community. Plus, OHI has an incredible training program, not to mention all the benefits. Here at OHI, we believe everything is possible, and that means as much for our employees as it does for those we support. Apply today and see what's possible for your future. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with mesothelioma or asbestos-related lung cancer, contact the law offices of Joe Bornstein to learn about your legal rights. Maine has the highest rate of mesothelioma fatalities in the U.S. You may be eligible to receive compensation if you were exposed to asbestos products while working in a shipyard, mill, factory, or construction site. For a free case evaluation, dial 207-CALL-JOE or online at joebornstein.com. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, no matter how big or small, depend on Hammond Lumber Company for the products and services you need. The knowledgeable staff at Hammond Lumber will be with you every step of the way and keep your project on schedule. From free estimating and project planning to design and drafting services, an extensive product inventory with a wide variety of brands to choose from, and of course, Hammond delivers from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. It's the Midsummer Classic on Fox. Man, this is going to be fun. Stars all over the field. The world's biggest headliners serving up their mammoth hits. <laughs> They're taking center stage for one incredible show. Moosehead Medicine, Greenville's favorite dispensary. Our knowledgeable staff will guide you on your journey to find the perfect remedy specifically for you. From pain relief to relaxation, Moosehead Medicine has what you need to improve your well-being. Stop by Moosehead Medicine today and discover the power of nature's healing. Welcome back. July 4th is right around the corner and there will be fireworks galore in communities across the nation. However, all that glitz doesn't always mean a good time, especially for pets at home. Fox's Lauren Blanchard shows us how to help our furry friends have a calmer and happier Independence Day. It's almost time for red, white and boom. For most Americans, it's a fun and noisy tradition, but for cats and dogs at home, it can be a nightmare. So the 4th of July is the number one day that pets go missing. Loud fireworks can cause extreme anxiety in pets who don't understand what's going on. According to Rover.com, 71% of pet parents say their dog is afraid of fireworks. 30% of owners say they skip July 4th celebrations in order to stay and comfort their furry kids. Trainers say there are a couple things that can help, including a little known technique called sound or noise desensitization. First, you want to play the triggering noise, so fireworks, using your phone or speakers. Slowly turn up the volume and reward them and play with them so they learn the noises are not necessarily a bad thing. Play fetch, do fun things while these loud bangs are going on in your home. We can start to get them used to it and create a less stressful experience when the actual fireworks. Occur. Other ideas for dogs and cats, keep your pet indoors, give them lots of love, use a thunder shirt or a pressure wrap, distract them, and if all else fails, consider asking your vet for medication to keep them calm. For some pets, that is the only thing that is going to help to get them through it, and there's no shame in, as a pet parent, going to your veterinarian and saying, hey, I need help. Vets also say, talk to them early. Don't wait until July 3rd. Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. Some really good advice there for pet parents. Meanwhile, smoky skies are back in at least some parts of the country, and officials are urging caution again with unhealthy air quality impacting many Americans. Fox's Madeline Rivera reports. Like deja vu, skies across the country are sporting a familiar hazy hue. Smoke from the wildfires in Canada are drifting again towards the U.S., smothering cities from the East Coast to the Midwest. Obviously, you know, there was New York a couple weeks ago, and apparently now it's us this week. 
With the return of the smoke comes the return of air quality alerts. Conditions in major metro areas like Chicago, Milwaukee, Detroit, Cleveland, Pittsburgh and Indianapolis were deemed very unhealthy. This is what we would call an extreme, just as we have extreme heat, extreme cold. Several cities canceled events for safety reasons. Minneapolis canceled all active outdoor programs. Erie Zoo in Pennsylvania closed because of poor air quality. And in Michigan, the city of Rochester Hills postponed a fireworks show. You just want to avoid it as best as possible, especially if you have asthma, if you have lung disease, even if you have heart disease, try your best to stay indoors. But one itinerary didn't change. President Biden pressed on with a trip to Chicago, the White House pledging to help Canada as needed. The president recently directed uh, additional personnel and resources to, uh, uh, and equipment uh, to help combat the wildfires in Canada and also directed the DOD to uh, expand the National Guard's fire guard program. While the D.C. area will still be under a code red air quality alert Thursday, other places like the Great Lakes and the Midwest could see some improvement later this week. In Washington, Mather Avera, Fox News. It really is extraordinary to see how longstanding and pervasive that infiltration of smoke has been. I mean, it's been weeks yeah. and weeks now. I happened to be in Pennsylvania when some of those air quality warnings were at their height, and it was mm. just extraordinary to be in one of the southernmost points of right. Pennsylvania and have the air look like there was a fire a mile away. I mean, it was just incredible. And you could yeah. smell it. You could absolutely smell it. It was apocalyptically hazy. It's so strange. And you'd think with us being so close and having that vicinity to Canada that mm -hmm. we might be experiencing more of that. But that really hasn't been the case no, over been, the last several we've weeks. We've been sort of luckily bypassed, if you will. But many others, not so much. Yeah. All righty. Well, our full five day is coming up. Stay with us. Well, if you like rain showers, you are in the right spot. There are rain showers scattered in the forecast each of the next five days. More on that when I come back. Here at Twin City Tire and Service, you will be working with industry professionals. We have ASE certified master technicians and certified tire and loop technicians. If we need your vehicle for a duration of time, we offer a complimentary shuttle service and can even offer a loaner vehicle. Being a client at Twin City Tire and Service means that we will treat you right. This includes a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty on mechanical repairs. We also provide you with one year of complimentary roadside assistance. Come see us today at Twin City Tire and Service in Brewer. Fear, pain, and anxiety are all feelings associated with dental treatments, but it doesn't have to be that way. Dental lasers offer a way to remove tooth decay without using the dental drill. In fact, we do most dental fillings here at Twin City Dental without numbing, so no needle. And for treatments like root canals or having many teeth extracted, we also provide IV sedation. So call Twin City Dental for your next dentist appointment. Great value. Go with the longest lasting brand, Toyota. And at the Toyota Summer Value Event, you could save up to $1,900 with affordable 3.99% financing on most Highlander models. And every Highlander comes with two years no cost maintenance and more. The longest lasting, longest lasting brand. So for a vehicle with long lasting value, see your New England Toyota dealer, your all wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. Saturdays, baseball's best are showing out on Fox. Buckle up, it's going to be fun. What a play! This is where MVPs are VIPs, and where aces always come in pairs. Saturday means it's showtime for Shohei and meal time for Mandy. All the swag, all the salt, and all the slam. Swing and a drive! Are you kidding me? The biggest games on the best day of the week. Fox Saturday Baseball, all season long. It's an out-of-this-world celebrity competition. Oh, God. <laughs> Stars on Mars, Mondays at 8, 7 central on Fox. Here we go. Your full weather is brought to you by Diversified Ink Tattoo Studio in Penobscot Plaza in Bangor. And let's talk about air quality. Right now, not so bad, but some of the worst air quality in the world right now is across the Great Lakes area. And that's slowly sliding toward the east. So this will likely get worse before it gets better again with downhill air quality, most likely on Friday into Saturday as our next area of low pressure kind of enters the picture at that time. Today, though, the 
The bigger story is the clouds, the rain showers, and the temperatures. Rain and cloud cooled air across the region today. Only 71 in Millinocket, 69 here in Bangor. That's not normal. The average high being mid upper 70s. Nobody did that today across our neck of the woods. There's a slight breeze out there currently. It's actually going to go calm for several hours tonight. And you know what that means. The air is kind of saturated. The breeze is going to die down. That will likely give us some areas of dense fog in there tonight in the early parts of tomorrow morning. Already visibility is down to three miles in Millinocket, six miles here in Bangor. So you get the idea. Uh, locally dense fog that will be very, very, very slow to burn off throughout the day tomorrow. All right. So lots of areas of showers out there. There's nothing heavy in here, but it is persistent with some drizzle, some light rain, cloud cover, press repeat. Uh, that'll be the case for us tonight as another one of these upper level lows kind of sits over us, right? It's been the story kind of pretty much all spring and now into summer. And here's another one that's going to keep temperatures back a bit today, of course, and tomorrow. Uh, but it has reinforcements, all right? Here's system one, there's system two, there's one behind that. So we're in a pretty wet pattern right now that's going to keep the rain showers around scattered in nature into the holiday weekend and beyond. Let's walk you through it. Here's tonight, a couple showers out there, some clouds. Here's tomorrow. Here's into Friday, still lots of clouds, a couple of showers around. There may be a few hours Friday afternoon where we dry out for really much of the afternoon, but then some more rain showers are back behind that on Saturday. And the rain will begin to add up, not all at once, of course. We're talking a good soaking probably inch or so of rainfall between now and Monday afternoon. we got a ways to go, uh, but just know there's going to be scattered rain showers in the forecast each of the next five days around here. So we have the rain showers and clouds across our night. We're checking on the tropics, though, looking quiet out here again, uh, but we'll keep an eye on this for you if these decide to form into anything in the future. Our forecast then tonight, though, is rain showers out there scattered in nature. Some dense fog is likely. Look for low temperatures down near 62 for tomorrow. All right, so scattered rain showers again. Many dry hours, too. A bit warmer, low 70s tomorrow with a south breeze around 5 to 10. And then looking ahead, your five-day forecast shows those rain showers tomorrow. Also on Friday, more widely scattered, though, on Friday. High of 77. Saturday, 75. Sunday, 72. Monday, 73. Another chance for rain on Monday afternoon. Beth? All righty, Jeff. Thanks so much. And sports is next. Stay with us. Looking to buy or sell a home? The Moore True Team of Better Homes and Gardens works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Give the ladies of the Moore True Team a call today or visit their Facebook page. Wherever you are, whether you're ready or not, it's coming with a purpose, with persistence, with the power to change the way you live. So you don't have to change the way you live. Generac Automatic Standby Generators. Control your power, control your life. Visit Generac.com. Are you considering buying a new home? A home inspection is a major step in the home buying process. Knowing the current condition of your future home is very important. From simple DIY repairs to major issues that could cost thousands down the road. Not only can TJ inspect your property, but he is also a licensed contractor. Give him a call today at 210-5000 for a free inspection quote. Approximately 50,000 kids, like Brooke, receive care at Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center each year. You can help them by supporting the Summer Classic for Maine Kids. This new tournament will help all kids receiving care at Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center by raising funds to ensure that pediatric care is available today, tomorrow, and in the years ahead. Every dollar raised helps kids get back to the business of being kids. For more information about the event and how to donate, please visit northernlight.org slash for kids. Looking to buy or sell a home? The Moore True Team of Better Homes and Gardens works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Give the ladies of the Moore True Team a call today or visit their Facebook page. Tonight Sports is brought to you by Herman Motor Company. Whether you're looking for a new vehicle or to have your current vehicle serviced or detailed, Herman Motor Company has it all.
Hey everybody, Ryan Sudall here. Thank you so much for joining us. We are just under two months out from field hockey season up in Orono, and the Black Bears cannot wait to run out onto their brand new facility for the first time come August. Our Tyler Cruz reports on the significance of the investment. It'll be very exciting for our players when they arrive on the 8th to, to see the completed project. We are now just 52 days away from game action here at the University of Maine's brand new field hockey facility. And despite how it looks, we are just a few more steps away from this field being complete. Yeah, the field's looking good. We had a, a meeting on uh, Monday where we had a walkthrough and we were able to basically go all the way around the field and talk about everything. And it was just exciting because it does, it has like, there's much more in place right now. So there, you know, the fencing and the stands and the press box. While the rain this month has probably kept most of us inside, it hasn't stopped the contractors in Orono. The rain, I think, has impacted a little bit this week. Uh, I mean, they're still here and it's going to get done, obviously, but I think they've been working around the, the rain to finish the E-layer part and then um, in the next couple of weeks, the turf will be down, so that'll be that'll be really exciting. Once the final buzzer of the 2022 season rang, construction began, and this new stadium marks the most significant investment in Maine field hockey since the program's inception. But don't take my word for it. This is like the most significant, you know, investment, obviously, uh, for our program to have um, a new field, but um, an actual facility, you know, completed facility and um, the impact, you know, that it's going to have, you know, this is significant to have your own stadium. And since the field has basically been built from scratch in front of our own eyes, Coach Babineau finds it pretty hard to stay away sometimes. Yeah, I mean, we've we've been out there a lot. Probably they're like tired of seeing us out there. <laughs> we sneak on sometimes. Uh, no, yeah, no, it's been really exciting to see the the progress, you know, even to see them there in the wintertime and to see them there in the weekends. And, you know, the, the hours have been like crazy and the, their commitment to getting the project done in time. has just been great to see. In Orono, I'm Tyler Cruz, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. Thank you very much, Tyler. Cannot wait to see the finished product there. Now let's move to some local baseball and the return of a Legion team that hasn't hit the field after, uh, in a, uh, after a long hiatus. The Old Town Orono Twins are back after nearly two decades. Quirk Motor City, which served players from schools like Old Town, Orono, Bangor Christian, and John Baps, folded last year, so it left them without a local summer team. But then the Old Town Rec Center took control of the program, and players like Mr. Main Baseball Jason Libby can once again play in front of family and friends in their backyard, including home games at Mansfield Stadium. Yeah, I wasn't sure who, where we were, where I was going to play this summer, but then this option came up, and I'm glad to be a part of this team. Yeah, it's definitely nice to be playing in your hometown, you know, right close by. You know, everybody loves Mansfield, a great, great field to play home games. And obviously, our away games aren't very far at all, which I like that. It's great, seven o'clock games. Uh, come by after work, you know, go to the concession stand, grab some food, and you know, watch a good ball game. And a lot of these kids and head coach Justin Crisofulli are coming off of deep, intense playoff runs, so the more laid-back atmosphere of Legion Ball is a welcome change. But like all their opponents, the Twins see it as valuable experience despite the reduced pressure. It's definitely completely different than high school ball. You know, the pressure feels like it's not as much on you. But, you know, I'm just trying to get some work in, obviously. I want to win a lot of games with this team and get prepared for the next level. And still early in the season, uh, but we'll be pretty good. We'll be right there in the, in the, in the top three. And finally, news from the NHL and UMaine Hockey. Wednesday night was the first round of the league's entry draft, and one of the hottest recruits coming to Orono this fall had his name called. Center Bradley Nadeau was selected 30, 30th overall by the Carolina Hurricanes in the draft. A British Columbia native, the 18-year-old Nadeau put up 45 goals and 68 assists last season for the British Columbia Hockey League's Penticton Vs. Considered to be one of the top shooters in the draft, Nadeau is just the fourth Black Bear to ever be selected in the draft's first round and the first since Barrett Heiston in 1999. And we all know what went on to happen that year. Will it happen this year? Who knows? Well, that's all the time we have for sports. I'm Ryan Sudall. We'll be back right after the break.
Sunny's Par 3 and Driving Range, located in Winterport, is the perfect place to practice all aspects of your golf techniques. Owned and operated by professional golf instructor Sonny Reynolds, this Par 3 course will suit anyone's game. Sunny's features a Par 3 golf course, a driving range, and golf lessons are available too. It's easy to see why Sunny's Par 3 and Driving Range is the best kept secret in Winterport. We look forward to seeing you this season at Sunny's Par 3 and Driving Range. Just a reminder that the rocket's red glare and the bombs bursting in air are brought to you this and every 4th of July by Phantom Fireworks. With state-of-the-art showrooms nationwide, we are America's number one destination for brighter, louder, safer fireworks. Phantom Fireworks, lighting up faces in the backyards of America from coast to coast. Visit fireworks.com for a location near you. Raoul's Garage has been serving customers in the greater Dover Foxcroft region since 1946. Our goal is not just selling you a vehicle, but also giving you quality service to maintain your vehicle at peak performance. Browse our inventory online or in person. Whether it's a car, truck, or SUV, we can put you in the vehicle that is right for you. Sales, service, and parts. Raoul's Garage, doing business the right way every day. The Lucerne Inn and Ryan's Pub is world-renowned for beautiful dining with a delicious view, featuring award-winning dishes from their executive chef, Arturo Montes. It's a true destination dining experience. Relax and unwind in an intimate space with your loved ones, family, and friends. We are pet-friendly, so your furry friends are always welcome to join you at your table on the deck, whether it's a special occasion or any occasion. The Lucerne Inn is the perfect choice for your business or family gathering. You guys ready to mix it up? Yeah! Twelve celebrities embarking on daring missions. We did it! The crime scene kitchen is open. Welcome to Beat Shazam! We are under pressure! Don't forget the lyrics, it's back! Yeah! This is United Taste of America. I'm looking for my next food star. On Fox. Mom and Dad, you must be so proud. We're proud of all of our children. She has to say that. Weekdays at 6 on Fox 22. Welcome back. A real-life Malibu Barbie dream house is getting fans in the spirit for the upcoming movie. The all-pink Airbnb mansion includes pool, relaxation areas, and even a dance floor. Fans can book a night in horse themed in a horse themed bedroom, which belongs to Barbie's boyfriend Ken, from July 21st to the 22nd. Airbnb says all the bookings are free of charge. Why? Because Ken didn't know how to list a price. The Barbie movie is coming to theaters July 21st. So that's a whole lot of pink right there. <laughs> All righty. Well, today is a big day for our larger-than-life friend, Paul Bunyan. According to the National Day calendar, June 28th marks National Paul Bunyan Day. Now, today was a day to remember our favorite lumberjack and his blue ox. Paul has been described as a giant and a lumberjack of unusual skill. He is known for dragging his axe and subsequently making the Grand Canyon. And although many cities in the north central section of the U.S. will claim to be the home of Paul Bunyan, we know that Bangor is his real home. Because how could it not be? Right. I mean, he's standing yeah. over watching us every day right there in downtown. So Lumberjacks and lumberjills aplenty yeah, here in Maine. I so think so. Why not? Yep, we love it. All righty, folks. Well, <laughs> that is going to do it for us. Take care and have a great night. Good night, everyone. <laughs>